Hi, this is Brandon Spilly from ThirstGym.com. Today we're talking about how to bench press against chains. So I've already got a video up about how to set chains up. You can check that out over on our YouTube channel or you can visit ThirstGym.com. Uh, we have an article on there as well with everything you know about how to set up chains. What I will say uh, is that bench pressing with chains can be incredibly beneficial for getting you through your bench press sticking points, uh, but I think also implementation is incredibly important as well as execution. So when it comes to setting them up, I've got easy loaders and my chain set up right here. For today's demonstration, I've only got one chain on each side. Um, but otherwise, your bench press is going to stay the same. Uh, and then you have your, your chains on there. What you don't want to do, and I've got this on my video uh, as well of how to set them up, is you don't want them attached to the bar in a straight line that defeats the purpose of having the chain set up. Uh, you can watch that video for that information there. But when it comes to doing this, we might program this exercise for two probably main reasons. One, to alleviate stress off the shoulder in the bottom position. You've got a client or somebody that really loves to bench press, but their shoulder doesn't love it. Uh, this is one way to be able to still bench press in a competition-based setting or actually on a bench press and reduce the load that the shoulder is going to take in the most vulnerable position on the chest. Uh, the other reason you're probably going to use chains is to increase the power and the strength of your bench press. So the chains, what happens is when I bench press, they go into the floor, and then as I bench press uh, off my chest, more and more chain comes off the floor, and that load is then attributed to the barbell and what I feel in my hands. So you could argue that the chains help develop my tricep strength, particularly when it comes to bench pressing, and also challenging the full range of motion. Because as we know, when we bench press, the hardest part is generally down here towards your chest, and the easier portion is further away. You can tell that by going to the commercial gym and people are only benching halfway. Uh, they're not doing a full range of motion. Well, it's because if they go all the way down, they know they're going to get stapled, and their ego is going to hurt because they don't have at least one plate on the bar. So here's how we're going to bench press with chains, and I'll show you how it's done. So we're going to talk some setup and all that kind of stuff, just in case if you don't know how to bench press, you can watch that also on our YouTube video, uh, YouTube channel, I'm sorry. But we're going to set our shoulders first, get underneath the bar. Hands are going to be about a little wider than shoulder width, knuckles towards the ceiling. Set my shoulders, set my butt, set my feet. Feet can be wide, they can be tucked, that's personal preference. Once we're there, take a big breath, we're going to unrack the bar, let it sit in our shoulders. Here, let it sit in our shoulders, come down, touch the chest, press. Down, touch the chest, press. Just like so. Now, we talked about why you might use the chains, and we said to overload the triceps, keep your shoulders healthy. When it comes to dynamic effort training through the conjugate method, the Louis Simmons and Westside, chains can be fantastic uh, in terms of developing the speed and power of your bench press. So whether you're an athlete or, or a power lifter or a strongman, um, I do think bench pressing as chains has some value there as well. Um, when it comes to programming for your dynamic effort bench press, I found out a couple different things. Uh, one is you don't need to use as much weight as you think you do. Uh, generally, I program my speed work for bench press between 40 and 55%. Every now and then I might get to 60, but that's pretty rare. That's not including the accommodating resistance or in this case, the chains. So. You know, as a 335-pound uh, bencher, um, I generally know that I'm working between 135 and 165 on the bar, plus about two chains on each side. Um, depending upon how the chains are set up, I might be able to argue for three. So that's not a ton of weight considering what I bench press, but understand that I'm pressing the weight as fast as I can each and every single rep. The chains on there help slow the bar velocity down so that I'm not having to be fully extended each time when I go, I can just keep going and I feel like it's actually stopping the barbell at the top or decelerating it, however you want to really try to kind of term it or look at it. But um, you can certainly program your sets and reps kind of all over the place. Um, I think eight by three is kind of the norm, eight sets of three reps. You can do five sets of five, seven by five. Uh, you could do probably 10 doubles. Um, generally, you're going to see more repetitions on the bench press just because there's less range of motion. Um, and usually, because of that, you need to acquire more time under tension for the exercise to really help you. Um, I've seen people being able to grind bench presses out pretty well. You don't see a whole lot of really grindy squats. Um, usually, they 
get stapled or they take it before it really gets really grindy. Deadlifts you see really grindy, but those are usually grindy because of positional work, and those people usually aren't going to get those reps anyways. But the bench press, I feel like you can see some grindy singles and meets, and dynamic effort training can definitely help you through blow through some sticking points and things like that. Um, when it comes to the amount of chain weight that you want on there, ideally you're going to want about 20 to 25 percent of the chain uh, weight of the lift that you're doing. So, you know, let's say I'm a 300 pound bencher, I want about 20 to 25 percent. So that'd be probably about 60 to 80 pounds of chain, give or take. Um, and so I know for me that each one of my things of chain is. 20 pounds, so having 40 on each side um, basically gets me to 80, but I do know that half the chain or so much of the chain is on the ground, um, so that puts me around like the 40, so I'm usually probably a little under on mine, but I do notice that when I put a third one on, it's usually a little too heavy. Uh, so setup can sometimes vary about where your chain's at, and that's why I say about 20-25%, somewhere in there, and you're pretty good. So that is the bench press first chains uh, and how you might implement it in your training program and what you're going to do. By all means, this can also be a max effort variation as well. You've got a ton of options um, with this in terms of programming uh, with your max effort stuff. And you can start varying about how many chains you got on each side and where your grip's at uh, and things like that as well. So just wanted to briefly talk about how you set up the chains and how to execute the exercise and why you might use it for your dynamic effort training, which is primarily, honestly, where I probably program this exercise more than anything else. So if you got any questions about the bench press first chains, how to set them up, programming with dynamic effort, speed work, uh, max effort work, conjugate stuff, anything like that, how you might implement it in an athletic training program, please feel free to leave in the comment section. Thanks. Have a great day.